Sports Card Radio fans, haters, welcome back to the channel. Back from the Super Bowl. Let me tell you what, you go to the Super Bowl, your team loses, hurts that night, hurts the next day, and then you wake up the next day and realized the last month has been pretty fun, football-wise. So uh, congratulations to all the Rams fans out there. Uh, well-deserved and enjoy uh, your off-season as champions. Let's kick things off on today's show. What I want to talk about is just uh, some interesting stuff that I looked at. I did a little bit of research, believe it or not, and I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to look at, there's a couple players, so I'm thinking about Zion Williamson, who is obviously not playing, and then there's Ben Simmons, who just got traded. I actually did a little bit of research before he got traded, and th then there is Deshaun Watson, quarterback, or maybe former quarterback of the NFL and of obviously the Texans as well. And so what I wanted to do was is look at their prices. And what I noticed is, is we're starting to see a flat line just over the last three or four months with those cards. And what, what it brought to mind was number one, that it, it, volumes are probably pretty light on these cards. Okay. It's not like a ton of them are trading hands. And if we had some big liquidity event, I would guess those cards would be out the door very quickly. Um, and so there's that, but it, what it does show me is there are some spec speculators in this market, okay? The fact that the Zion cards just don't continue to go down and uh, that Deshaun Watson cards don't continually to just bleed out to zero value. Ben Simmons obviously had some value and then once he got traded, it, it unlocked that just a, a little bit. And so what it is showing me, and then we're looking at Luca cards as well. He's playing absolutely fantastic. Looked like he's played himself into some kind of uh, basketball shape and he's got his team uh, playing quite well and they traded Porzingis, which should open up uh, quite a bit of opportunity opportunities for him uh, from a stats perspective. And so, uh, you know, what it's showing me and kind of the exercise I'm thinking about as my head is I'm not necessarily trying to get in here on the bottom on a lot of these uh, trading cards, but I certainly wouldn't want to go get in on trading cards and start buying and selling them uh, at, at a very high degree um, with them continuing to bleed out value. Um, so really the way I, I think about it is if you watch our videos from last year, we're buying and selling in this stuff. As this stuff is super hot, we're buying and selling cards uh, when it started to cool off that's when we really cooled off our buying and in fact we bought up we haven't bought a whole lot of trading cards over the past six months or so but starting to think like you know we're just starting to think broadly like can this market start to bottom the other thing that we're kind of up up against is the fact that there hasn't been a lot of new products uh, all the companies are facing supply chain challenges and so you're not really seeing a lot of new products and that could be increasing demand a little bit for the existing cards so i'm not convinced that we don't have another leg lower for kind of the ultra modern cards that i described and certainly the really speculative players. But the fact that the speculative players like Zion, who likely won't play this year, and look, he could turn into to Greg Oden or like a number of players that have looked great, but then all of a sudden injuries um, really impacted their career. And certainly Ben Simmons, while he has a new team and a new identity with that, he may not be the same player he once was. And certainly from a collectability standpoint, uh, a lot of the stuff that he has done has kind of, you know, we've gotten over Ben Simmons. And same with just Sean Watson. It's really tough tough to sit out a year in the NFL and then to come back with a new team, new coordinator and uh, be just as good. And certainly from a hobby perspective as well, have people want to buy your cards. But I think that could be a barometer. If people are buying into that speculation and buying into that potential hype with those cards, well, certainly players that are certainly playing well, obviously like a Joe Burrow, a Cooper Cup, those cards have gone up quite a bit and well-deserved. And obviously Luca, I think we've starting to see a stabilization of his prices. Just interesting. I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. My call on a video uh, several, about a month ago is I think we're still in this kind of flatlining period. And as long as you sustain that for a period of time, I think we could head into the summer and, um, and and see where card values are. I don't. I do not see these things rocketing back up. But if they start to stabilize, then you could start taking your opportunities on the Joe Burrows, on the Cooper Cups. Next year could potentially be, you know, like a Trey Lance or something like that could potentially open up in terms of of football. And so there could be more opportunities uh, in the card market 
in the coming weeks and months ahead. I think the other thing, obviously, we've got the baseball strike, but also the aforementioned uh, supply chain shortages with new products coming out. If we just start seeing a flood of new products, that could certainly impact values uh, and then certainly take money out of the hobby that was going into single cards. Interesting market. Again, I'd love to hear what you guys uh, have to say down in the comments below. You guys are a little bit more in tune to this than I am. Just throwing some thoughts out there and thinking maybe we're starting to kind of get around that corner, get around that bend on these values. Next thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, Mark's cards. Had to get in the car. It was just so windy out here in California. It's going to hurt the audio quality. Um, so Mark's cards, uh, his bankruptcy filing came across uh, last week. And what we learned is several things about this guy. Number one, he was an incredibly bad business person, which is not necessarily that unique. It didn't sound like he had a lot of experience running his business. He didn't have any previous business experience. It didn't seem like he was that successful of an individual. Um, so to get himself into kind of a small business it, to, for him to fail actually is not that uncommon of an outcome. But some of the things that we saw was he was in running his entire group sub operation through Instagram DMs, essentially. And look, I, I don't mind that you're getting your customers that way. That's the initial line of communication. But to not take that information and transfer it over into some kind of customer relation management system, like from Salesforce or on a spreadsheet or any of the number of open software, you know, open source software, you've got QuickBooks. You could have put all this information into a database, into something that certainly would help in this situation, but also might have helped him understand uh, the kind of financial hole he was digging himself in. Instead, him and Card Collector 2 blamed their CPA for a lot of things, which shows you how incredibly green and how incredibly naive both of those people, both Mark's cards and C Card Collector 2, show how naive and how uh, very, very, very much in kindergarten those both those little boys are at running businesses, okay? Yes, when you have a business having a CPA does help it helps organize things you can help they, they can help you with tax organization they can help you with visibility into your numbers but to rely on them essentially to make business decisions and for profit and loss perspective that's not what a CEPA is for a CPA is just to organize things for you present you with the numbers and it's up for you to make those decisions and obviously Mark's cards was making the decision to run his entire Ponzi scheme on Instagram DMs which is problematic considering the fact that you could be suspended from Instagram. We've also seen that Instagram and Facebook and all these sites have had outages, sometimes down for many a number of hours, maybe even a half a day. So that certainly can interrupt your business as well. So if any of you are stupid enough to do group subs in the future, I would demand receipts. I would demand an invoice. I would demand an itemized list of all the cards that you sent them and have it not be on some social media a platform. I'd want it printed out in an email on a PDF and have that sent to you. That will allow you to have a little bit more protection and a little bit more organization and recourse because now what people are having to do is go through their DMs on Instagram and now relay that to PSA who's trying to mitigate the situation to a certain degree. But we're not absolving PSA from any liability here as well. They allowed customers to submit over a million dollars worth of submissions to some somebody that was running their entire business through a social media platform when they could have easily transferred a lot of that information over to QuickBooks, Salesforce.com, any number of options out there, PSA should really, really think about what they're doing with these group subs. I also think that if there's going to be group subs into the future, you should be paying PSA directly, not the group submitter, because these situations are just going to continue to come up because what happens with Mark's cards is he thought he was going to be able to take essentially a no interest loan, an unsecured loan. He already had bank loans. We saw that this guy had six figures in bank loans. He was behind on those. 
He had no money in his bank account. And so he was taking these group subs and taking that money. He was living his life, paying his own bills. But he is probably, I, I don't necessarily, we could find that he was criminally culpable for this. But I think in his own mind, he thought he was going to be able to dig out of this. He was going to be able to buy product, buy cases of cards, buy single cards and flip them and make a profit. And then eventually when he had to pay the piper, he was going to be able to come up with that money. Now, unfortunately, the trading card business just simply isn't that easy. It's a very, very difficult business. It's a low margin business. As we've seen over the last uh, few weeks and months, it's been incredibly difficult to get product, whether you have a great account, one that's seasoned for a decade, or a brand new account like Mark's Card theoretically have, it's incredibly difficult to get this product. And we've talked about it numerous times here on the channel that both Panini and Tops are just gonna continue to shrink the margins on these products as there's been too much of the profit bleeding out into the secondary market. And so the companies are gonna start asking for a higher and higher price on that. Same thing through a distributor you're just going to see a higher and higher price for that so it made it very difficult for mark's cards to continue his ponzi scheme my guess is we're going to see more of this uh, throughout the rest of the year maybe not something to this degree that impacts this many individuals because of the group sub nature but we're going to see other card shops start to fall we're going to see other businesses inside this hobby begin to start to fall as we make it through the rest of this year because everybody in this business that just got back into it over the last 18 months levered up their business with the idea at the hobby being at a certain level from a price perspective, from a demand perspective, and it's been completely reset to a much lower, lower level. Now we talked about in our first segment how we might feel like we're reaching a floor, but we're not gonna bounce off this floor like a trampoline or something or like Michael Jordan dunking. We're not gonna just go back up to where it was. I don't know. I think we've seen the peak in this hobby and it's much like housing prices in 2008, okay? Housing prices crashed and it actually took quite a long time for the demand and for the money and for the supply and demand to start to even out to where house prices finally got back to the peak. Now they're way over, okay? And so we could see eventually that same thing in this hobby, but we're gonna crash for a while. I think we're gonna hang out here down at the bottom for a while. I think there'll be some opportunities, especially those of you that haven't levered up and made the mistakes that like a Mark's Cards card collector too, and a lot of these guys got themselves into over the past 12 months.